Every once in a while, I'll see a comment somewhere about making the jump into Apple Arcade or not. I don't think this is a perfect recommendation guide, but it's as good as anything if you should subscribe to Apple Arcade or not. My experience on this guide will focus primarily on the devices that I have used to play Apple Arcade for almost two years, that being my iPhone and the Apple TV 4K model. The first question to ask is, do you have an Apple device capable of Apple Arcade? If you don't, then obviously don't get it. But say you do, then what should you play Apple Arcade on? iPhones and iPads will handle all Apple Arcade titles easily, and the option to use a controller or touch controls makes jumping into games simple. The nature of Apple Arcade games also makes it easier to pick up and play for a few minutes on more portable devices. The big downsides of this are the cost of iPhones and iPads, and in the case of iPhones, the smaller screen state. I don't own a Mac, so I can't speak on the Apple Arcade experience there, but I can for Apple TV. Apple TV is the cheapest way to play Apple Arcade games, with the largest storage options for 4K models available to buy for around $180 and Apple TV HD for $150. The 4K model is the better buy here, as the 64GB HD model is discontinued and the 4K model is better overall in speed, storage, output, and more. The new TV remote is also an improvement with a dedicated power button and better design choices for the remote. Personally speaking, I don't use the TV remote that much when I play on Apple TV, opting for a controller 99% of the time. When you pair Apple TV with a controller, you get the best console experience that you can with Apple Arcade, with better controls and with the most screen estate. The Apple TV itself doesn't take up a lot of space, leaving enough room for any other devices you have for your entertainment center or TV stand. The biggest downside of Apple TV is that a controller is required to play every game. You can play some games with just the TV remote, but others like Atone, Heart of the Elder Tree won't work without a dedicated controller. Another item to consider is that you lose touch functionality on select Apple Arcade titles and you can't access certain modes without it. The Create mode in Wonderbox is inaccessible on Apple TV, so you can only play levels. You'll need an iPad or iPhone to create boxes and levels. Again, I'm not sure if this is possible to do on a Mac or not. This also means that some games don't always play best with a controller, such as card games like Solitaire Stories that just feel faster to play with touch controls. The next thing to consider is the catalog. There won't be anything on the level of an immersive sim or a mobile MMO on the service, but when it comes to the core genres, Apple Arcade covers almost all of them. Thematically, it may be a different discussion and viewpoint entirely, but there are puzzle, strategy, shooter, action, adventure, visual novels, racing, and more games available on the service. Recently, Apple has started to release a Classic Plus collection to Apple Arcade. These are noteworthy and classic games that you can play on Apple Arcade without making any additional purchases to the service, like Monster Hunter Stories, Game Dev Story, and Monument Valley to name a few. Throw that in the mix of Apple Arcade originals like World of Demons, Fantasian, The Oregon Trail, and more, and you have an ever-growing catalog of great games that won't leave the library, so long as your expectations are kept in check. There are some duds on Apple Arcade, but that isn't that much different from any other subscription service that's bound to have a misfire every once in a while. Games that have been around since launch have also received great developer support, so an average or poor game can always turn great days or weeks later. The last thing to consider is pricing but I'm not talking about the monthly cost. $5 a month isn't a difficult choice for people to consider subscribing to Apple Arcade or not. Rather, are there more than three games on the service that you can see yourself purchasing elsewhere a year? Games that appear on Apple Arcade won't be on Android devices, but they can appear on PC or console platforms. Having said that, most games that appear on Apple Arcade can be there for months before showing up elsewhere. Titles like Shin Sakai, Into the Depths, Stila, Alba, A Wildlife Adventure, Life Slide, 
and Grindstone are a few Apple Arcade games that stayed on Apple Arcade for months before showing up elsewhere. Games that I think are quite solid and worth trying out. Games that were released on Apple Arcade first can cost up to $20, at least looking at the regular prices on the Nintendo eShop. Buying three of those games is as much as a year-long subscription to Apple Arcade. It goes without saying that buying these games elsewhere will get you arguably better controls and visuals. Speaking from my own personal experience, however, there have been more than three Apple Arcade games a year that I would easily recommend. The amount of games that I think reach that level have so far outpaced the cost of buying them outside of Apple Arcade. If you felt about buying maybe one or two Apple Arcade titles a year, then buying them on other platforms is simple enough. Otherwise, it's worth subscribing to Apple Arcade for those games if you're willing to accept the trade-offs of lower fidelity and control. Those three key points are the main factors to consider if you should subscribe to Apple Arcade or not. Device availability, the catalog, and the yearly price of games you are interested in outside of Apple Arcade are the general items to look over when considering to subscribe to Apple Arcade or not. There's more to consider if your needs are more specific, such as certain genres on the service, but I like to believe that this quick guide covers the main pressing issues for those considering subscribing to Apple Arcade or not.